Good morning, Floss Tube. My name is Laura, and I'd like to welcome you to Stitching by the Shore, my channel about cross stitch mostly. Well, every once in a while, something else, but today is cross stitch, and we have a lot to talk about, so let's get going. If you are new here, thank you so much for pressing play and giving me a try. I hope you like what you see. Maybe hit subscribe and like and all that good stuff. And feel free to ask any questions or comments. I usually really try to answer questions um, when you make them so that uh, you will get a direct um, answer right from me. Um, I do my very best. If I forget or if I don't answer something, feel free to ask again and I'd be happy to. And if you're a returner, thank you so much. I am so grateful for your continued watching and your support. It really means a lot to me. So thank you. I really, really appreciate it. This weekend is 24 Hours of Cross Stitch. Um, this was created by Jen Lee from Quirks and Stitches. I will link her floss tube down below. I think she has a new one out this week. I haven't watched it yet. And maybe she talks about 24 Hours of Cross Stitch. I'm not sure. There's also a Facebook group. And I will link that as well if you're interested. Really cool to see what people are working on. And um, if you're haven't ever done it before from what I understand because I'm fairly new to it April was the first time I did it um, it started off as like a straight 24 hours no sleep just stitch for 24 hours and it's since evolved it started at midnight coming into today Friday and it will go all the way through Sunday midnight so you have Friday Saturday Sunday to, to spread out your 24 hours if you choose some people are team no sleep and some people are team sleep I am team sleep. <laughs> what little bit I sleep, I'm still team sleep. Uh, I looked last time in April, my very first time, I was able to do 17 hours out of 24, which is great for me because I can't sit for long stretches of time or everything just falls apart, <laughs> for want of a better word. So I get up, I stretch, I move around, and I do things. So. I thought 17 was pretty good. Maybe I can try to hit that goal again this time. Five hours each day. 15 would be my 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 goal, and then everything else is kind of gravy. Um, and what's neat with the Facebook page is different people are talking about how they're doing it. So some people chose 12 projects, and they're doing two hours on each of those 12 projects, or eight projects in three hours, or one project for the entire 24. My goal will be to work on the projects that are close to finishes, which you'll see today, because I would love to come out of the weekend with maybe a finish or two. That's that's my, my goal. The 24 hours is a very big, high, lofty goal. <laughs> Not sure about that one. 15 is the hours and maybe a couple finishes, but check it out. Um, if you're doing it, tell me what you're doing. Tell me what your plans are. Are you sleep, team sleep, team no sleep? Are you working on multiple projects or just one? I wanna hear about it. And if you're on the Facebook group, um, you can see what everybody else is doing. So that's that's fun. And that's kind of a, a fun weekend thing, especially because we're still here. We haven't gone anywhere, we're not going anywhere. So why not stitch if I'm gonna be home for the weekend? I don't think, mm, there's no other specific plans going on this weekend, so let's stitch. <laughs> Speaking of stitching, I do have a finish. I told you I would really try to, to get it out, and I did. Um, it's Lizzie Kate's Dear Santa. So I am doing this one. Now I've definitely, um, I like how I've done it on, on the fabric, but I could see that too on one of the green, today is a green fabric day. I, I think pretty much except for one other thing, everything might be in green, shades of green. No, except for the blue. But I have a lot of green, and I could see that being on one of the um, lighter greens that I'm using. I am going to do this one, but I was debating, I might do it as an ornament, because on 16 count, it's listed as two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So you know I do 18 count. So it would be even smaller, so it might make a cute little ornament, and that I might do on a different color of fabric than just the coffee tea dyed and the neutral, um, and that might be cute. But this is the finished product. Yay! I did not do, there was very, very small line of white stitches at the bottom. 
I didn't think it really did much, so I chose not to do them. This pattern also comes with buttons. There's a couple that are just stray out there and then the top of the present would be a button. I just, I just did a bunch of stitches on the top to make it kind of like a little bow type thing. I had done that in Christmas Rules, the other Lizzie Kate. Um, she likes to put buttons on the top of her presents. <laughs> so I did the same thing I had done with Christmas Rules and I like it, I like it this way. It gives it a, it's, it's raised up a little bit more. It gives it a little extra texture. Texture. I don't think I did it as good as then I did with Christmas rules, but that's all right. This one's done. So I have a finish. I like, I have no idea how to finish it. I do like the frame, the color of that frame with it, especially because I did do a neutral. So I could see doing something like that and putting it. And I like how it's like in a scene um, as well. So that, that's, that might be how I decide to finish it if I can find something along those lines. I guess I could always paint something too, that color. That's always an option. So that's the finish. It's the only finish I have. I have a few that are almost there. So like I said, hopefully this weekend, if I, if I can, I'd like to get some finishes done. The first one is my non-Christmas of the bunch. <clears throat> now come August, I think Christmas might get put aside for a little bit. I have an August plan, but I'm not telling you till next week because it's still uh, July next Friday, it's, right? 31st, yes. So I have another week to kind of iron out, but something came to me last night when I was thinking about August. I said, ooh, that might be fun. So this is the August house from Twin Peak Primitives. Now this is part of a cell that just keeps stitching, Pam is doing. It's called the I'll Be Home Sal, and um, I will link the Facebook page down below. There's people doing them all as one, as Pam is. I'm doing them separately. So this is what I have. This one's getting close to a finish. This is done on Friendship Green by Fabrics by Stephanie, and I alluded to it before. It's 18 count. Everything you see will be 18 count, so I won't keep saying that, but I will tell you colors. And the Lizzie Kate was just coffee tea dyed by me. I can't remember if I told you that. So this is Friendship Green. You, you can see it a little bit better here. As I go closer, it kind of looks really, really light. But that's what I have for the house. So all I have left is the greenery with some flowers and leaves and then the word August. So this is my question to you. When I was doing the white, the white doesn't necessarily come out really strong. Now I don't know Maybe when I, in the pattern, it's charted in the white. If I were to make it as a word, maybe it would. I don't know. But would you do it in the white or would you pull one of the other colors? Like there's four different, three or four different colors in the flowers. But I don't know if that would kind of look too clashy with the little squirrels. Um, so what would you do? Would you try, I, I might try it in white and see how it comes out, maybe do one letter. Um, or would you pull a different color? I thought about the house color and do it in the yellow. That's another option I was thinking of too. So any, any suggestions or um, any thoughts? Today is a day of thoughts. I have a couple questions for you. So that's the first one. But I love how it's coming out. It's really cute. I wasn't sure if I get that, that house. It, the house was more than I thought it would be, but... I always say that about houses and I have some more that I might that are on my wish lists of possibly buying down the future so apparently I'm always gonna have a house being stitched even though houses are in the moment not something I always enjoy but I apparently love them when they're done <laughs> so that's the I'll be home August house I do did I I don't know if I picked up September I'm debating on well, I have September, but I wanted to show you. This is the September house. Now, I don't know what fabric to do it on. I thought about doing it on the same fabric as July because it's kind of the same colors. The house is light. Um, the house is very light. And the greens and the purples. I do have the, the, the DMC, so I am going to throw it on a couple of different shades. But what do you think? Any thoughts on that while I'm at it? Because I think that's the next one I would start. 
I'm in no rush to, to do these, to be honest with you. Um, when they get done, they get done. Um, it's not like I absolutely have to have them done by the month. Um, I don't know how I'm finishing them. I'm kind of now trying to think about decor in the next house. So I don't want to necessarily finish things for this place that it might be completely different. So I don't know what I'm doing yet. So that's that. And honestly, some of it is just stitched for the joy of stitching. I don't even know if some of it's ever going up. I don't know if that's, I don't know if I should admit that, but it's true. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I just like stitching for the stitching. The first Christmas I have is Country Cottage Needleworks. It's the December Cottage. This is done on the back side of Vintage Country Mocha. I thought I'd have this one finished this week, but no. Speaking of houses, you thought the other house, which is, I mean, look at the difference in sizes here. There's no comparison. And this guy took ages. Now, I mean, and even doing the different colors in the stone, it's adorable. But for some reason, it took me way longer than I thought it would. So at this point, I have to finish the snow and then I have the bottom border. And then I have to decide, there's snowflakes thrown all over the place. I don't know if I'm doing them. I'm gonna see what it looks like without them and if I like it. There's also, in between all of these spaces, there's little like a snowflake with a little something in between it. I think it's like a yellow or something. I don't know if I'm gonna do those either because I kind of like the simplicity of this. We'll see. It's always, Sometimes with some of these, oh, I do have to give the little cardinal some legs though. Sometimes with these, until I actually see it and do it, I don't make my final decision. But I definitely like scaling back rather than having way too much on there. So that I might be scaling back on that with the pattern a little bit. Last week I gave, this was my start from last week. Um, I had plenty of whips this week, works in progress. So I didn't start anything. <laughs> I'm looking towards August at this point. My worst thing is kidding up. I'm always, and it's the fabric. I'm always second guessing myself on the fabric. So it takes me a long time sometimes to choose fabric. When I do, then I'm raring to go for the start. But until that happens, sometimes I'm kind of slow to get the starts going. This one is Prairie Schooler. It's the 2020 Santa. I love those little bunnies. Those are the best. This one is done on Picture This Plus Jade. And that's what I have so far. He's coming along great. His, um, this one I debated, I don't know, could I get a finish this weekend? I mean, I definitely want the cottage. This one I definitely want as a finish. This guy, he's got a lot of flat down here. I mean, I don't think overall it'll take a lot of time, but trying to finish the August cottage and the December cottage. This would be my third choice as a finish, but I'm not sure. Oh, that looks lighter than you come out here. You get a little bit greener. Um, I'm not sure if he will be a finish, but I'd like, I'd like to see him come close. I am not stitching as far as I know. I haven't 100% decided. There's a little dashed border around him. I'm not stitching that, and I don't think I'm stitching the words. So it would just be Santa and the bunnies. So he, he, it's coming along nice. I, I, I gave myself extra of the jade fabric so I'm able to roll it and that's helping me stitch this in hand because picture this plus is most definitely the flappiest of the fabrics I use. So when you stitch in hand, this guy is sometimes tough to get good tension. Not that I have great, I mean, if you were to look closely at my stitches, it's not like they're award-winning stitches, but. They work for me, so <laughs> I'm happy. Right? As long as I'm happy, then that's all that matters. So that is Prairie Schooler Santa. I have two more whips. The next one is my non-green Christmas whip. This one is Jolly St. Nick and Rudolph, and this is from Stitching with the Housewives, Priscilla and Chelsea. I went a different route rather than the uh, dark fabric. I went with a light fabric. So I went with blue. This is April Showers from Be Stitch Me Fabrics. I love it. 
I love it as a shade of blue. It is fantastic. The white does not pop, so it's the one thing that makes me hesitate using it if I really want white to pop. But otherwise, it is fantastic, and I really love all the other colors that are coming up against it. So I got this going on here is super cute, but it is super fiddly, and you're changing colors, and I said this week, I want to focus on something else. So Santa got my focus. So obviously most of my time was his his hat. And then, um, did I mess up on something somewhere along the line? I did. I did the wrong color. I think instead of, so there's a black, a dark gray, and then white in, in these. Well, the light gray that's used in his beard, which you can see the difference, it was laying there and it looked white in the light, so I grabbed that instead of picking, I think it's 3862 that's used <clears throat> for the white. So that ended up in there, and once I had done it, I said, I am not taking that out, because that was the, was that the last color I did, trying to pick that out in among all that other stuff? And honestly, you can't tell. It still has the plaid with the darks and the lights. It looks cute. What's funny is I did that first and then I did the rim of his hat. So his hat has the the black and I'm using anchor black um, and it's got the dark gray. And what's funny is with the April showers, it kind of looks cute without anything else. But I've already done this one so I will continue to use the 762 <laughs> rather than the 3865. Since I've already started because that would look kind of funny if this was different um, I'm sure you'd notice it if you were looking at them that this was slightly different than this and he has a lot of plaid he has it on the cuffs of his his jacket and or his, well his top I guess his pajamas he's in pajamas I guess so he has in his cuffs at the bottom a little bit down here so I want to keep it all consistent but I think this week I might continue to work on Santa. Because you know what I'm going to do is probably keep working on Santa and then leave the border to the end when kicking and screaming I have to finish it. <laughs> but I really like this one. I have no idea what I'm doing with it. But I think it's cute. And I love it. I love it on the blue. I so want to do some more Christmas stuff on this blue. Because I am, like I said... If there's a lot of white, no. But if there's a lot of other colors as the dominant colors, that's, I think I'll, I just, I wanna give it a go. So that's that one. I have one more work in progress. Oh, let me keep, try to keep everything together. The last one is Silver Creek Samplers, my Christmas list. A lot of you have done this one already. Some of you are planning on doing it. It's a fun one. Silver Creek really, they really chart nicely. It's the first Silver Creek and I'm, I love, I really enjoy it. I think I'll do more. This one is done on Sea Glass from Be Stitch Me. And I know it's Sea Glass because I will show you what came in this week in just a couple minutes. So yes, I can confirm that this is indeed Sea Glass from Be Stitch Me. So it's getting too long now for me to show it up close. This one was my trouble project of the week. So sometimes you know how you're stitching and you really just don't pay attention to what you're doing. <laughs> that was me. I was just going along. I had done the words, I think I'd done Goodwill, I'm doing some of the, the um, peppermint sticks, wrapping, whatever. I wanted to do these presents and get them done. So I'm like, cool, let's do the presents. Well, what I didn't realize, and I don't know if it'll show up, is that there's, a little bit of white inside the present. And I thought it was some design. Who knew it was the 2017? Well, I would if I had actually looked at the chart. So I did all of the white, not paying attention, thought it was some sort of design. I had gotten two thirds of the way done with the blue and then it, it hit me. It was 2017. I said, I don't want, so I, I briefly considered keeping 2017 because that's a lot of frogging. 
But I said, I didn't stitch it in 2017. 2017 doesn't have any like huge significance that I can think of. So I don't want it. Now, mind you, I had done the white first and I had done it all in one strand. So I carried because I knew it would be covered. And then I stitched the blue over it. So let me tell you, it took me ages. First, and I decided, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna frog out the white and just do the best I can. Well, it got to the point where I almost had to frog all of it out, two thirds of the blue present as well, because it was, it. <laughs> I was terrified I was gonna tear the fabric in the end. That was what I was really, really worried about. So, it's not great looking because, you know, some of the stitches are wonky because I pulled on them as I was pulling out the white. But what I decided was I finish it up for now. It looks a little wonky, but once I put the words underneath, gingerbread and all that, will you really notice it unless you're really looking at it? If after all is said and done, I hate it, then I will pull out this blue and just restitch it so it looks a little neater. I did change this blue, I think it was 9.30 and I went 9.31 just because the 9.30 is, is pretty light and uh, I, you wouldn't see it as well on this. So I just, no, it was 9.32 because the words are in 9.30. So I did 9.31 and just made it a little bit darker. But I think it looks fine. So my goal for Christmas in July was to get to gingerbread. Now I didn't specify whether it was the words gingerbread or the gingerbread men. So if I can just reach the row of words gingerbread, which is doable, that might be my goal for <laughs> And I might have said, check, I've made my goal. I think I suspect I meant the gingerbread men as well semantics. We're going with the words gingerbread. So I am hopefully still on track. Um, I still have to do the word presents. I have to go back and finish the word stick for peppermint stick and the candy canes. They're a little fiddly because there's a lot of different color changes. But then we hit the row below. So and that gets me, I anticipated that was about two thirds done. And that's where I wanted to get by the end of July. This will go, probably go away for the month of August, unless I feel I really, really want to get it going again. But I think it would be definitely um, easy enough to pick up afterwards and just keep going on it. But yeah, so that's where we go, where we got on that. I love the colors, I love the look of it. It is so cute. No idea what I would do with, with a finish, but that's okay. I'm just enjoying the stitching part. <laughs> the rest of it will come. Just some grand idea will just come to me one of these times. That's what I'm, that's what I'm hoping. And that whew, is all my stitching. So shopping, I have things coming. I have a little bit. Um, I seem to buy one piece at a time, whether it's Fabric of the Month, or Friday Night Fight Night, or Misty's Fabric Games, or whatever it happens to be. So I think I have, they're single pieces, but I think I have pieces coming from four different fabric dyers. They'll probably all come today. No, they'll come Monday, I bet you. That, that's what I anticipate. <laughs> but then there's lots to look at next week. I do have a couple though. I did participate two weeks ago in Friday Night Fight Night. And I picked up, I saw a sea glass on 18 count, which I love if it was this color. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna give it a try. So this is the sea glass. So if you hold up, and I'm gonna hold up the back side of my project so you can see. That's sea glass. Okay, maybe it's a little bit lighter, but I can definitively say, now this is 18 count, remember? Other, other types of fabric, will die differently. Um, but this is the 18 count Ada. And that is as close as I can tell sea glass. So I'm officially calling this sea glass now. This is such a pretty, pretty color. I love this. And I could see it used for so many things, not just a Christmassy thing. 
What's funny is the base of the next one kind of is a sea glass base. I am in the fabric of the month from Bestitch Me and that came in. I am in the standard, which is basically just all different colors. She has standard, she has neutrals, and she's just created a mix where you don't know from month to month if you're gonna get a standard or a neutral. Now, I loved the neutral so much that there is one coming. <laughs> she's great. I asked her, I said, oh, that's so pretty. Are there any 18 counts left? And she said, yep. I said, please, me please. So that is on its way. I did get the shipping notice. Now this one does not have a name on the card, but I'm pretty sure she said on her Facebook page that it's going to be called Wicked. And this is what it is. So that is a sea glass base, I think, almost, sort of. And then, or maybe there's just some of those colors in there, but it's gorgeous. I have no idea what I'm using this for. None whatsoever. But that's the fun of a fabric of the month. Would I have chosen this normally? I'm not sure, but I love it in person. And I bet you, depending on what I put on it, it could be so much fun. So I believe, I don't know if it's on her website yet, but she did say she was gonna put both fabric of the months on her website. This one being called Wicked, and I wanna say the neutral might be called Blush. I'm not sure. I know she's got some others that she's talked about that will be coming up on the website. There is a Friday night fight night tonight if you're watching this on Friday and it's a neutral night. So <laughs> I know how much people love neutrals. It could get a little, it could get a little crazy. I have a lot of neutrals. So unless I see something that really knocks my socks off, I'm not sure I'll claim anything, but I say that. Every week I say, ah, I'll just look. And then next thing you know, and I try to keep it one, two tops because I want, you know, I want other people to have chances. But um, a lot of times there's at least one me please that heads up on the website. But this is gorgeous. So, so pretty. No idea, but I'm really happy that I got that. So that's it for shopping. Um, like I said, I've got some things coming. A lot of times it's fabrics and floss. I did get floss from Fire Poppies, but you don't need to see DMC. I've already kind of, well, the ones I could figure out, it's already in the projects. And there's like five or six that I have no idea what they're for. And they're for something, but I can't figure it out. So hopefully I'll figure it out at some point. I'll probably use them for something else and then I'll need to buy them again when I have to get them for the thing that I actually bought them for. <laughs> So that's it. Let's go with, let's talk giveaways though. Um, I did not hear back from my floss tube number 21 giveaway winner. At the time it was a PDF, not the hard copy, but a PDF of Luminous Fiber Hearts. What is it called? Gathering Berries, I think. Gathering Berries, yes. Gorgeous, gorgeous. She has released this as a fundraiser to raise money for her nephew's family, her nephew and his family. So, so pretty. This, and you know me, I am I am definitely a DMC girl, but I could see where fancy floss on this one would be beautiful with those birds. I will give you that one. So, so pretty. So I looked this morning at my spams, my emails, my Instagrams. I think I figured out all the different places on Instagram people can contact you. And there was no contact. So I am going to repick a winner for this one. Um, if you could within a week contact me because this is I'd like to I'd like to get this wrapped up um, over there on Luminous Fiber Arts and if you contact me I will have her send you the PDF. So the winner for this one is yeah Sylvia W. Oops. So Sylvia, if you could please, well you know your name. Um, if you could please contact me, my Gmail is down below. Feel free to reach out there. Um, I also have an Instagram, which is listed down below, Paper Laura. You don't have to follow me. I think you can still just DM me. Um, do so, and either way, give me your email address that you would want the PDF email to. Once I have that, oh, and your full name, just so I know. I will email that to, or I'll contact Luminous Fiber Arts and have her send you the PDF of Gathering Berries. Hopefully you haven't bought it yet. If you have, could you just let me know and I will try to find somebody else who doesn't have it yet. All right, so that's that. 
old business. Now new business for giveaway. You know that last week I talked about um, trying out Mad for Minders, Needle Minders, and I bought one for you guys, and this is it. So pretty, since it's Christmas in July, I figured I would get a Christmassy one. And so, I asked you about bedroom paint colors. So cool, I loved hearing all of your answers. Um, and it's so neat, um, just what everybody does color wise. Now I know some of you are limited because if you rent or whatever, but that's where you personalize, right? So I bet you your walls are really cool with things on it. And the winner of the needle minder is May River Stitcher. And these are not going to May River Stitcher. So May River Stitcher, if you could please contact me with your address, I will send that out to you. Um, thank you so much for watching and participating. And that is it. Those are the giveaways. So if you are ready to jet off, then have a great week. If you wanna hear a little bit of life stuff, then that's what's coming next. I have colors to show you. So I remembered them this time. This is the color. So the way the house is set up, the kitchen, living room, dining room, one big space. So we have to do one color for all that. So half the house and then up, there's just a little, I don't know if you'd call it a bonus room, it's not that big, but there's a little one upstairs. Um, I figure it's a good place while our kids are still um, living with us or whatever, if they wanna do movies, video games, whatever, and then at some point down the road, grandchildren or whatever, but that's up the staircase and everything else. So this is everywhere. Now, what's hilarious is, if you look against this wall, <laughs> do you see how we have a certain type of taste? It's showing up a little bit lighter, but this is, we had to choose from Sherwin-William colors. This one is, oh, what's the other one? I just blanked out. You're probably all yelling at me. Benjamin Moore. This is Benjamin Moore behind us. So, ironically, when we were going through, and we kind of liked this, um, <laughs> we ended up with it. So throughout half our house will be this. It's, it's depends on the light. It's either bluish um, or sometimes a little grayish, which is what this color does too. This can be a very blue or more of a gray depending on the light. And then going into our bedroom, since I asked about the bedroom. Now these have been standing against the wall. I don't know why they're so dirty. Our house is obviously, for some reason, this is going to be our bedroom color. So this is what we're getting. And this is another Sherwin Williams, obviously, because that's, I don't even know. Well, we didn't write what the name of it was. It's some sort of creamy. And then we're just going, a lot of you did gray. We're doing a gray for the bathroom. So that's where we will get the gray. We looked at a few different grays for the bedroom. And what was funny was <laughs> the entire house was either a shade of blue or a gray. Oh, see in the different light how it becomes brighter or lighter um, yellow. And so we said, we need something besides blues and grays in our house. So that's why we went, this is wild for us. We are not necessarily, although I do have a Navy bedroom right now, which I would guess most people would be like, what? Um, and it, it, I like it, but, um, so this is gonna be a complete departure, much lighter, much brighter, much cheerier. So those are our colors. Other than that, this week was a crazy, I think it's done, I hope it's done, animal week. So first off, we found out that underneath in our backyard, underneath the siding, there was a nest of, I think they're bumblebees of all things. So we called the bug guy and he doesn't kill them, they weren't killed. He, I guess you put dust up in the area or whatever and they all go away. Didn't work, they came back, so he did it again. And this time, as soon as he did it, my husband took some, I don't know, steel wool and put it where, you know, the hole must have been. <laughs> oh, I could see yesterday after he did this, is all of a sudden he's like this. The bumblebees got mad at him. <laughs> and luckily, he's fine. Can bumblebees sting? I don't even know if they sting, but... <laughs> so, first we had a nest of bumblebees that were getting nice and cozy inside our house. Earlier this week, 
you know how I was talking about bunnies and chipmunks and everything running around in our yard. Well, I'm looking out the kitchen window, it looks into our backyard, um, doing dishes. Next thing I know, I see these huge wings. Well, what is it but a hawk? And we have trees. Now, we live in a suburb. It's not woodsy, it's not, but we have, you know, Connecticut has a lot of trees, old, tall trees. So we have the trees and I see him get himself nice and comfy ensconced on a branch. I said, oh, those poor bunnies are in trouble. And for the next couple days, that hawk, followed by another hawk, have been flying around checking things out. Now, the bunnies and the chipmunks are scarce. I'm really hoping that means that they got the memo that the hawks were hunting. And it doesn't mean that the hawks found stuff. I think the, the first night they were out, my husband it was at dusk. He's like, I'm going to go sit outside. I think he really wanted to protect the bunnies because if he saw any bunnies, because the hawks were up in the tree. I don't know what he was going to do, but um, so our bird seed had fallen. You know, I talked about the bird feeder and looking at the birds. So the bird seed had finished this week and I said, you know what? I'm, I don't want to put any more because that's just mean and the birds and everything else are coming out. And if the hawks are there, it's just providing food for them. So our bird feeder was empty. So last night, I said to my husband, I said, let's go outside and sit outside in the backyard for a few minutes. We were gonna watch the Yankees game at seven o'clock. And I said, let's just kill a couple minutes, get some fresh air. So I'm getting ready to go outside. Next thing I know, he yells, there's a bear at the bird feeder. Now again, we live in the suburbs. We don't have, our. there is an area in our back that is basically, I'd call it overgrown. It's not woods. I mean, I have like a 10 foot rhododendron because I don't cut it down. Then I have forsythias and I have another giant rhododendron and then you have ivy covering everything. So it looks woodsy, but it's not. This is a general run of the mill, fairly busy suburb. We have a busy road just right there. There's a bear. Now, and at the back of our yard, there's like a chain link fence. So he'd have to climb the fence to come in. So he grabs on, now the, the bird feeder is on a shepherd's hook. He grabs it and with no effort, completely bends the metal of the shepherd's hook, which is a little scary. And then he proceeds to break the entire bird feeder because I think he was trying to find something. So now we, and then he kind of wandered around um, in the backyard a little bit. Shamrock went barking like crazy, which then the bear came and looked at us and I said, oh, Shamrock, don't do that. I don't want him next to try to come to the house. And then eventually he ambled around and went back into the little overgrown, I'm calling it woods, it's not woods, it's overgrown area. But the thing is, we don't know if he's now hanging out back there because we can't see, or if he climbed back over the fence and went to the next street. So we called, you know, whoever you call for animal protection and stuff. And he was tagged, so obviously they know about him. And they said, not a lot we can do. Don't put any more bird seed out. Well, I can't, I have a broken bird feeder, but now we can't put bird seed out till like November, apparently. Um, and he might come back. So now the dog is going out in the front yard for the near future, because we can't tell <laughs> if he's just decided to hang out in the overgrown area or if he's gone. So that is my that is my group of animal stories between bunches of bumblebees, hawks, and bears. I'm done. I'm I'm done. And I don't even live in what you would consider anything country at all. So I hope now that I, I, I liked the little bunnies and the chipmunks, but that's <laughs> that's my story. So anyway. It's been an adventure. Luckily, we were not sitting outside when the bear first came out because we would have had time. It's a patio and then we have a little yard, so it's not much, but he would have been stuck on the bird feeder for at least a minute or two before he realized there was nothing in it, which would have given us time to run in the back, but I'm really glad I wasn't out there when he, <laughs> when he came ambling out. So Mo grabbed the camera and he tried to take some pictures, but he was doing it through the screen Door, obviously because we're not gonna open the door to the bear um, if I have any good ones I may post them on Instagram but that's been my adventure for the week everything else has been pretty quiet so I rambled a lot so this will be longer but if you're still with me thank you 
And luckily, I haven't seen the Hawks in the last day or two. I really hope that means that they didn't get anything and they've moved on. Hopefully it doesn't mean they have exhausted the supply here. <laughs> Um, if you're participating in 24 Hours of Cross Stitch, let me know what you're doing. I'd love to hear. Um, we can stitch together. And um, if you're doing other stuff, uh, I hope you are safe and well and taking care of yourself. Um, hydrating and doing all the good stuff to stay safe out there right now. It's crazy. Um, just stay home and stitch. That's what I'm going to do. Um, but until next time, my friends, happy stitching. <laughs>